and I am back again with Be Bold and Explore, the channel that talks about different job opportunities around the world. Today, I'm here to give out information about all pairing, which is what I did to come to USA. I'll be giving out, giving out information about how to become an au pair, who can become an au pair, requirements about being an au pair, profile preparing interviews and as much details as i can give so if i leave out anything at all please don't hesitate to comment and i will come back to you with as much as i can so in the meantime please subscribe and like and share with your friends and family and stay tuned Here's your information. So I typed down everything on my laptop and I'll be reading from it. So ex please excuse me looking sideways every now and then. Here we go. First things first, what is an au pair? An au pair is a young person, male or female, between the ages of 17 and 30. And by that, it's not for all countries so some countries requires 18 to 26 and some requires 18 to 30 so it depends by country to country so an au pair is a young person who stays with a local host family learns their language and culture in exchange for accommodation and pocket money by pocket money is a stipend where in which you get um, every week or every month. It also depends on which country you're in and the, uh, the amount also varies by country to country. A host family is a family willing to host an au pair under the host country's official program. Host families must meet certain requirements as well as au pairs in order to join the program for instance they must have a child under the age of 18 the ability to host an au pair in their house and respect how a uh, host family responsibility during the program so by by that it means that any host family that wants to get an au pair has to have an extra room for the au pair so that the au pair will have privacy. That's very important. If you're gonna invite someone new in your house, they need privacy, so yes. And number two, who can become an au pair? As it says in the beginning, any male or female between the ages of 17 and 30. Be able to maintain a fluent conversation in English or have a good knowledge of the language of the host country. So wherever you go, it's not always required that you know their language, but it is definitely required that you know English. Or at least have an experience like to hold a conversation in English because sometimes au pairs come to USA for instance to improve on their English. They are not fluent in English, but they can hold a conversation at least and Then number three point three have experience taking care of children It can be volunteering it can be watching over cousins friends kids at home um, It can be nannying in your country there's different ways to get experience when it comes to childcare. You can work in schools or preschools and all that. Point number four, not be married or have children. So I don't know about you, but I wouldn't hire someone who has kids of their own. I mean, it's, it's almost like you leaving your own kids back at home to watch over my kids. I mean, yes, you want to take care of your family, but sometimes it's like, how are you able to leave your kids 
on their own back at home and then just to come and watch over someone else's kids it's confusing but it works for other people and sometimes it doesn't work for other people it's just yeah because it's stuff like homesickness and then you won't be you won't be too worried about your kids back home and not be able to do your job here and mind you you are thousands of miles away from your family and your kids it's e it's not gonna be easy for you to just fly back and forth because it is yeah, expensive but anyway point number five have completed high school so yeah most requirements when it comes to being an au pair is at least a complete high school and some in some areas maybe they'll require a degree or something but i'm i'm doubtful it's mostly if you completed high school and you passed high school not just completed i'm like eh, i didn't really pass this much but yeah you have to have passed your grade 12 12th grade or whatever grade that your country ends up at yes the next point is be in good health you do not want to be very sick or chronical sickness and go to a different country sure they might have more advanced um ways to heal you but not all not everyone is going to want to hire someone who is sick so please make sure that you're in good health that's why most of the time uh agencies are, uh, want you to go to a doctor for a checkup and the next point is no criminal record so you also are required to do a background check to see if there's any criminal record behind you and if they find anything that you won't be allowed to come and au pair. And number three, why should you become an au pair? Here are some points. Au pairing provides the opportunity to become part of a community and meet others in your field. Most au pairs form social groups in the areas that they work in. It's a great way to meet other people and other au pairs. Point number two, you get the opportunity to work with children. That's if you love working with children or else don't become an au pair. Have a hand in hand in their upbring upbringing and watch them grow. That's if you love working with children, of course. So yes, it provides you, oh, sorry, point number three. It provides you with the perfect opportunity to earn a decent income while staying. Many au pair jobs are part-time or only require you to be the children with children after school hours. So leaving you plenty of time to study or explore. Point number four, you get the opportunity to earn reward, rewarding income while doing something that you love. So, I mean, why not, right? <laughs> so, number four, where can you become an au pair? What countries and, all, and whatnot? It always depends on what country you are from. There is a website that I love using or I used to love using while I was still in my au pair years. Uh, it allows you to find families and all that. I'll talk about it later on, but it has a page where it says where you get, uh, where I can become an au pair. And then all you need to enter is your nationality. So I'll use my nationality, South African, um, your age, I'll say I'm 20, which I'm not, I wish I was. <laughs> Relation st uh, status, I'll say single, but I'm not, I'm married. Anyway, uh, and if you have kids or not, which is no and still no. And then you just press center and it will show you all of the countries you can become an au pair and <clears throat> all the requirements needed 
to become an au pair in that country. So you just press on that country, whatever country you want to be an au pair in, and yeah, you'll see all the information about it. Number five, let's talk about money. Au pair salary or stipend, as they call it. It varies country to country, just like most of, like ages. I have five examples here for kind of like different countries right now. USA, an average monthly pay is about $800. So au pairs must be paid 195.75 a week. Most families will just give you $200 and some are very stingy. They'll just give you the money as it is, as it shows on a contract. And then they also give two weeks paid vacation each year, along with their own bed, bedroom and three meals a day. That is what's required. But you do find those families that are stingy or just yeah think about themselves and just don't do as they're supposed to so my advice to that is talk to your LCC and yeah get help don't just keep quiet if you have issues with your host family and they're not following the rules and then country number two is Sweden which is where I used to be before I came here uh in addition to mandatory language course so you have to go to school and learn swedish and that's paid by the family host families in sweden must provide room and board as well as a minimum monthly stipend of 3500 sack which is about 400 dollars so yep it is lower than usa definitely yeah, it was a struggle being there <laughs> gosh i do not miss it but i had the experience so it's all about that and then country number three australia i've always wanted to try australia but yeah well so because there's no official au pair program in australia wages vary but most families pay between 150 to 250 Australian dollars, which is 145 to 180 US dollars a week. It is close to USA, but still under no low. I don't know how expensive things are in Australia, but yeah. And then in addition, room and board. So let's just say all countries require the family to give you room and board. The third, uh, the fourth country is Germany. The minimum salary is 280 euro, which is 327 USD a month. Ah, bless your hearts. Yes, that is very low. <laughs> that is very, very low. But it works for a lot of people. I wouldn't discourage you to not to go there because it's, it, it is an experience and it gives you something to do and it allows you to save. So yes, it is not a downer, but if you have nothing to do back in your country, what, and are not earning anything, my, I mean, this is something, you know, it can give you something, it can help you a lot. It can help your family that if that's what's needed. And then country number five, Switzerland. Au pay, oh sorry, au, per, <laughs> au pairs get a paid between 500 and 700 Swiss. Uh, Swiss francs, which is around 550 to $770 a month for 30 hours a, a week of work. So that is not bad. Remember with the USA, you work 45 hours a week and that's, and then you get $800 uh, a month. So I would say it's not bad, not bad at all. I would definitely try that if I was still, you know, 
in my age in my young days but yes and then obviously room and board is required as as always and let's move on to number six au pair responsibilities and duties don't let anyone take advantage of you okay so here we go here are duties and responsi responsibilities of an au pair playing with children well you are working with children so you got, are going to play with them driving and picking up the kids from school and other activities it is not every family that requires an au pair to drive so some uh, families don't require that at all and some do yeah and then cooking easy recipe uh, recipes that's cooking for the kids your responsibility is with the children so yeah Point number four, keeping the children's room tidy and clean. It is very important to keep the kids room tidy and clean. In some cases, you can help the children keep their rooms tidy and clean, you know, let them have chores and prizes and whatnot. For me, when I was an au pair, I did not have to do much when it comes to keeping the kids room clean because I used to tell them, instruct them, do this do that do this and then the only thing that I would do in their room is make sure the closet was neat and their sheets were clean and their clothes were clean and then when it comes to toys and all it is all on them and then point number five helping the children with their homework so kids that go to school they might like need help with homework so it's usually easy but you know education evolves every time just like technology so sometimes it's like what on earth am i looking at especially if you haven't been to school in like 10 years it's like what is this so yeah putting kids to sleep so it's not always that you put the kids to sleep sometimes the parents put the kids to sleep so if you're lucky enough you'll find you'll get those family that loves being with their kids so much they just require you to work with them during the day and then at night it's all on them which is what i had and some nights though like date nights i would be required to put their kids to sleep and then the next point is helping the kids the host kids with personal hygiene brushing their teeth changing diapers depend depending on how old the kids are if they are infants obviously you need to keep them their diapers clean changed make sure they take a bath every now and then i mean some parents allow their kids to take a shower once a week yeah i'm getting itchy just thinking about that <laughs> but yes at least brush your teeth every day every morning every night it also depends on what their parents want sometimes you can not force something that you grew up with on other people you know yeah you might be used to taking a bath or shower every day and then bada bim bada boom you get to a family where they only take showers twice a week and like oh that's all what culture shock is you know and then um the next point is light shopping uh you know running errands for the family it is not always required for you to go shopping most of the families will just tell you to write down on a lit like a list of things that you need and then they'll go to the stores and shop for groceries and stuff and then <coughs> the last uh point is loading and unloading dishwasher on that i would say yeah you are gonna do that pretty much every day and if you're lucky enough and have like an older kid you can just teach them how to do it and they'll help you you know yeah exchange this day it'll be you the other day it'll be them and whatnot and then here uh what should an au pair not do cooking for the entire family 
Well, with that, um, it depends. If you love cooking and you agree with your host family that you will cook for the, for the entire family, that's on you. <clears throat> you know, that's your choice. Otherwise, it's not a requirement. If ever the host family, like the host parents are like, yeah, you have to cook for everyone. No, you are not required to do that. You are required to cook for the kids. And that's that. Cleaning non-shared rooms or work in the garden. You are not a garden worker. You are not a maid. So you have to remember your responsibility is everything to do with the kids. And that's when you are on duty. So anything else that they do after or like when you're off, that's the parents' responsibility. Like they have to clean up. They have to, you know, I mean... They grown ups. They have arms and hands, and they can't always call on you to do everything for the kids when you're not working. Remember that. <laughs> Washing the car. Yeah, you are not required to wash the car. It is not your car. It's their car. So, unless it's something that you like doing, then sure, go ahead. It's your choice again. You have to remember if it doesn't have to do with kids <clears throat> it is not your responsibility when it comes to cleaning the car you only clean it up when maybe like the kids made a mess in it or something otherwise and that's only if they did that mess when you were using the car or they were in the car with you kind of thing you know keep them nice a nice environment <clears throat> cars and all yeah uh doing laundry or ironing clothes for the whole family oh yeah so a lot of people have this trick they usually do is they'll end up mixing their clothes with the kids clothes so that the whole laundry is in there and then it's almost like you have no choice but to just fold everything when you fold the kids clothes uh-uh do not do that. When you do do the kids' laundry, make sure you separate it, put it in there, do the laundry, quick, quick, dry it, fold it up, put it away. If they do mix them up, you can literally separate it after it's all done. Separate it, fold the kids' clothes, put the parents' uh, clothes in the basket. Unless you don't mind doing it again, it's up to you. But if you do all that without them asking, they're gonna get too used to it and take advantage of that so remember um cleaning windows that is not your job they don't do it themselves they hire people to do that so do not feel obligated to do stuff like that taking care of other children um, others children besides the host kids so here's the things a lot of families will like <clears throat> have friends and family come over with their kids and then just you know throw all the kids on you as if that they your responsibility they are not if that happens you have to talk to the whole family and tell them these kids are not my responsibility my responsibilities are your kids unless they're gonna like are they gonna pay me for working with their kids if they're not then no Okay, it is not required, yeah. Uh, but yeah, anyway, you get what I mean. And the last point is taking care of pets unless previously agreed. So <clears throat> if you go to a host family or talk to a host family and then they tell you that, that they have a pet, you have to be comfortable with the pet, but it's not always required that you take care of the pet because they, the pet is not the child, you know? Some Host, some people love pets so they'll work with the, they, they don't mind taking dogs for walks and all that stuff I mean I'm a nanny and the people that I work with have a dog so every time I take a walk with the kid I just take the dog with me like he's, he, she's not on a leash so we just take a walk and it's all nice and easy otherwise I'm not responsible for anything else I'll take the dog out anytime she rings the do doorbell and then that's that so yeah, those are the do's and don'ts of an au pair. And let's move on to number seven, pros and cons of being an au pair. 
we are gonna start up with the pros so the pros are point number one the cheapest way to live abroad for up to a year actually up to two years depending on what country you're going to and point number two being part of a local family so i mean you're joining a new family new environment and i mean that's cool it's fun it can be fun depending on what kind of family joining point number three improve your language skills like i said before a lot of au pairs come to usa like places like usa to improve on their english so if you're not that good with english it's okay like it's cool they don't mind that you come here to study there's like a, a some study courses that you could take to learn english number four find international friends abroad so you come to usa or any other country you meet new people make new friends you know spread your love and friendliness <laughs> number five uh, learn more about other cultures if you're that kind of person who loves uh, learning new things this is the best way to learn a new thing come to a different country learn their culture you know be part of the culture or something point number six share your culture with others a lot of people um, I don't want to see say ignorant <laughs> but a lot of people need a lot of kind of education when it comes to different places in like for example i'm from south africa and and i'm in america a lot of people will ask me oh my gosh weird questions such as what country in south africa are you from or do you speak african or yeah there's a lot of like stuff that people ask so you can teach them all that i guess if you don't mind oh yes okay number seven point number seven become mature and independent oh yeah when you travel on your own and to a new place you're gonna have to grow to be mature and independent obviously in new new place you have like you have no one around you your own all your family is back in your country so yeah you grow a lot to from doing this and point number eight help raise up and educate kids so that's another thing if you love kids this is a perfect opportunity for you if you don't don't do it and last point is enhance your city with international experience i mean that's a very good pro i don't know about you and let's go to the cons okay con number one au pairs need to adapt to another family's lifestyle so when you do an interview with a family make sure it i mean it depends on what you want to learn if it's new culture then sure go with the family that you feel is best for you culture wise but I would say go with a family that has a similar lifestyle than you so it's easier to adjust you know don't go with like something that's totally the opposite of what you live and then when you get there it's like oh my gosh I cannot do this this is just not for me it, yeah it always ends up like that Con number two, specific requirements, especially experience in childcare. At times, dealing with children can be difficult. So make sure you have at least like minimum experience with kids with, before you do this. Like, uh, I think it's 8,000 hours that's needed for, for it, which is a few weeks, months like take care of a few kids to make sure that you can deal with kids at a certain age and there's a field where you are required to say what ages you can work with so if you're not infant qualified if you've never worked with an infant 
do not say you are infant qual qualified because that's very dangerous for the kid and for you and then there's <clears throat> people who complain about working with two-year-old and all that there's terrible we have to remember they kids so there is going to be like you know tantrums and all that you just have to be patient and be able to handle the stress when it comes to working with kids so make sure that you can handle that stress before you come to a different country because then you won't be able to go back home easy and just like oh mommy i can't do this need a new job no point number three family and kids are most important then come international friends parties traveling and other benefits of the program in any case the family's plans are always the first priority yeah when you come to usa as an au pair sure have fun and all that but you have to remember you are here for a reason and you have to focus on that reason first before you go out and get into danger you know have too much fun and forget that you have responsibilities and then last but not least living with your employer when you live and work in the same place at times it's hard to split working time from free time yeah so a lot of families will want you to uh, watch their kids while they do something you know because you are home so make sure that you have other activities to do after work so that you don't have to always be working even if you're not getting paid to work those extra hours so unless you like being around the family then you can do it number nine agencies that can help you with the process of becoming an au pair so there are different agencies that you can go to you can find out more information about them but i will give you a list of different agencies that work with america and a few that kind of work with other countries as well um agency number one cultural care one of the biggest agencies that's around and then number two um uh, au pair in america i know a few people who are with au pair in america and they say it's good number three expert au pair it's a small kind of agency best budget of, uh, as it says here um i highly recommend them only because they were very good with me and yeah they're very easy going and i'm not in your face so yeah number four au pair international um i don't really know much about the agency and i don't know a lot of people with the agency so i can't really say much about them mm, agent au pair same thing with this one but i would say do your research on all the agencies or whatever agency agency that catches your eye do research on that and then maybe you'll find it interesting enough for you so yeah and then another one is go au pair um my op honest opinion about them is uh, if I could rate them, I would give them zero stars for what they did to me. So, but a lot of people use them as well and love them. So, that's just me. As as we always say, people have different experiences in life and with agencies, I guess. So, you can't really expect to be treated as bad as the hours. And yeah, they took my $500. <laughs> But anyway, <clears throat> the next one is called Pro Au Pair. Ah, a pack social. I do not know this one either, so I'm not going to lie to you. You'll have to do a lot of more research on this one. 
um, and then Euro au pair a lot of people use this one as well it's one of the big uh, agencies so I would recommend it and then au pair for me I don't know it I'm just reading right now the list so but it's an agency you can look it up set see what they require and all that so yeah and then there's colors au pair um, that uh, colors au pair works with au pairing in different countries they is au pair.com it also works with different agents uh, what's called different countries there's uh i want to say travel abroad but i want to also say go abroad and there's ovc it is a good one it also gives you a little more uh opportunities than more than au pairing there's like teaching and camps on ovc so and uh if i'm not mistaken there's also hospitality jobs with ovc so i would highly rec uh, recommend looking into them and then we are at number nine we are almost done <laughs> please bear with me so yeah number nine is application of becoming an au pair the most things that host families look for in an application and here's your points the au pair profile is more than just your cv and a cover letter so every time you apply to be an au pair you are required to write a cover letter that explains why you want to be a common au pair tell you like talking about yourself and something that will attract the family to your profile in specific uh, so it says an appealing profile is the key to a successful au pair search so let host families and au pairs know why you are the best candidate they will require contact details like email phone numbers address social networks it is not a necessity that you put, put in your social networks if you're not comfortable so yeah this contact information helps us getting in touch with you your contact details are displayed on your favorite users by default personal details this blog contains information about you and your education language knowledge special diet requirements etc this is a brief overview of your person so you're going to talk about yourself your experience education where you're from and all that and an au pair or whole family job profile here you can describe your perfect match countries you are interested in working hours experience and other details related strictly to your childcare experience so sure you can mention any other job that you've done before but the most important jobs that you are required are to do with your child care like if you've uh, volunteered maybe at a homeless shelter you've worked with uh, preschool or <clears throat> just with ch children in general and then additional detail is this is one of the most important parts where you can address your future au pair or host family by writing a letter about you your family hobbies why you would be why you would like to be part of this program and other important details so if you are an au pair try to write in your future in your future host family's language even though it might be hard they will probably appreciate the effort and get an idea of your language skills that's if um, you are going to a country where you are strictly they strictly want you to know the language so but it's not always required you just you can just write in English which is the main language that you have to know at least or 
try. And then if you are a host family, describe your family, your daily routine, the au pair's future accommodation and working schedule. This way the au pair will get an idea of your ex expectations. Try to write in a friendly way, use easy grammar so au pairs can understand everything, even if their language skills are not that good yet. So if there's any host families or people who want to host family watching this, that's for you guys. And yeah. And then search criteria. According to your search criteria, of, of the, you'll create a list of rec uh, recommended users and send it to, to, your, to you as soon as new applications meeting your search criteria appear. So uh with most applications with different agencies um what they do is families see your profile before you see their profile but you do get websites such as opair.com and uh opair world where you can search for whatever criteria you are looking for in the family and then you can message the family first and so on and then media, to make your application more visual, add some pictures. Uh, when it comes to pictures, it's required that you put in something, at least working with kids or volunteering, doing what you like, whether it's playing music or art or drawing, like, you know, something that will attract the family. And then sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words. And in most uh, agencies, they also require you to make a video, an introduction video, where it's almost like the letter, but you have to summarize it, kind of keep it short. I think it's what, it was a, a minute video talking about yourself and just explaining why you want to be an au pair and whatnot. So nevertheless, the au pair program offers a way to live a unique experience abroad on a budget. <clears throat> Below is a short, so I'll be talking about a short list to help you decide whether au pairing is the right experience for you. If you want to be an au pair but you're not sure, here are some tips of if like that will explain if this is a good thing for you or not. You like working, working and spending time with kids. You are interested in staying abroad for a long time. You would like to discover a new culture and show tolerance towards cultural difference. You are okay with living away from home for some time. You are ready to do some light housework. By light housework, sometimes you'll be required to at least like clean up the kitchen. You know, the kitchen is the most dirty room in the house. It gets dirty literally every day. So stuff like putting away the dishes into the dishwasher and you know keeping the house well not the entire house but the areas that you spend and you and the kids spend in kind of then clean and you are willing to adjust to the needs and rules of the family so if you're not gonna be able to follow up on what they want in their home you have to remember it is not your house. It is not your home. Sure, it is your home for the next coming year or two, but you have to require that they invited you into their home. So you have to respect and obey their rules. Okay. And number 10, how long it takes to find a host family. So it depends on the several factors. You have to create your profile and make it attractive for the users. Check that you meet au pair requirements set by the au pair program. Be active. Uh, try and like, if depending on where you applying, try and reply to all the messages from your au pair, uh, from the host families. And if you're using websites like the opair.com and uh, opair world, try and send a, l a lot of families messages, introductions, so that they uh, see your profile as well. 
and then while contented whole families make also sure that you fulfill the uh, family's expectations be active open-minded and try to convince families that the time you time spent with you will be a once in a lifetime experience for their kids so you have to attract them to like so that they they can see the you know visualize yeah visualize they uh their kids experience when working with you like be fun be vibrant if you're a vibrant person if you like an introvert like be yourself you know be yourself be honest and then you'll be fine and generally speaking it takes from one week to a few months to find a host family so more people like a lot of people are luckier than others the first time i became an au pair i found my family i think after six months yeah and i did not that's that's another thing i did not depend on the agency at first i was depending on the agency to help me find a family but i just figured out if i do that i'm gonna wait forever so i took action there's groups on facebook au pair groups that you can join that will that and people are always posting their families or pairs are always posting that they are looking for a family or they're looking for an au pair and then you can just comment inbox and find a family there or otherwise as i said before go on the website called au pair world that's where i found my family the family that i came to here in charleston south carolina i found them there and then i matched with them and i went i joined their agency which was expert au pair and they helped me a lot and yeah it can be quick as that and we are now at number 11 <laughs> so number 11 is how to prepare for the interview so during your search for host families there is going to be interviews different interviews depending on uh, who likes you and who you don't like or who you like yeah it will always come up to the interview that's how you get to know a person and that's how they get to know you so keep the different time zone in mind depending on what country you are in and what country you want to go in like for example if you're in south africa and want to come to america or if you're in america and want to go to go to australia and stuff like that always remember there's different time zones so if you're in south africa and the families in america america itself has different time zones as well so depending on where the family is it might be six hours difference seven hour difference eight hours difference nine hours difference it all varies so keep that in mind that if they say maybe five o'clock 5 p.m make sure it is 5 p.m their time or it is 5 p.m your time so that you don't get it all confused in the end and then just yeah mix up the times and then number two read the host family's profile and write down some questions sometimes host families will like write down their information and then maybe they'll leave out a, a certain detail and you you would you would like to know more about the details or something write it down whether it's like um what a, what the kids are allergic to or if they have any allergies or something like that so yeah but i do have some questions for you that you could ask uh has the host family had au pairs before it is very important to know if they've had an au pair before and if they have how long they stayed and why they left you know and then sometimes in general like you will either be given the au pairs contact so you can talk to them and interview them in a way or them interview you i i've been like i used to interview different au pairs for my previous host family to make sure that they'll be a good match because i was already like i knew the families well and then so they trusted me enough to give me give me the au pairs numbers and then i'll talk to them to see if like if they're gonna be a great match and then another question is what will be my duties as an au pair 
so you have like before you go to a place you have to know what you're gonna be required to do um your schedule if it's a flexible schedule if it's not a flexible if it's a set schedule at least have an idea of what they will need from you and all that so yes um what motivated the family to be part of the program exchange so some families it's because they really really need help with kids and they need someone who lives at the house to be like always there like that's what flexibility is all about and then there's people who just like want the cultural exchange experience and then yeah there's different reasons for people joining the program so yeah remember that and then do parents work full-time is either they work full-time or they um they work from home sometimes you get uh, parents with only one parent working and one is not working so you'll have to, you'll probably ask yourself then why do they need me if someone else is not working like you know can they take care of their own kids and whatnot but yeah you can always be judgmental sometimes they just need a helping hand because kids are a lot of work so yeah and then the next question is does the family have any hobbies so yeah maybe like who knows you'll find a family that has hobbies that are similar to yours and then you just have fun together so yeah and they'll probably ask you what are your future plans sometimes it is required to know what you want for the future before you, you are called in to the family because if you do not have any goals or ambitions you'll find a family like why would i want someone without any goals or ambitions to come work with my kids like what are they going to teach my kids so make sure at least you have an idea of what you want for the future and then number three make a good impression during the interview both parts get to know each other a bit more so first impression is essential you have to make sure that you are in a you find a quiet place and a good internet connection before the interview because imagine you are talking during an interview and then out of the blue someone comes running in with screaming or kids running out blah 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 or even worse your connection just goes down and then like oh my gosh this is gonna look yeah that's not gonna look good you know so make sure that you're in a quiet env environment close doors you in your own space and that the connection is as good as it can be i mean sure there's places where you cannot get great internet service and it's not your fault no it's not so don't like don't hesitate when it comes to that just try and explain to the family your situation and i'm sure they will ex uh, they will understand and then try and do that get as much information out of that call as possible and then number four discuss the regulations and contract discuss the regulations and contract and the au pair contract which should be done as soon as possible agree on the number of working hours per week so make sure that um, you do not work over 45 hours in if you're in usa in some countries more than 30 hours you know kind of kind of thing make sure that you are working the required amount of hours as it says in your contract and then per week uh, what's called holidays and the amount of pocket money so um, as I said before with USA it is required that you get paid 195.75 but you do get families that kind of raises it up to between 200 and 250 so make sure that you know your payment and make sure that they if they don't pay you in time remind them you know yeah and then um remember that in some countries it is regulated and in any case it should be respected if it is necessary 
discuss the document you might need and the amount of time it would take to get a visa for the host country so uh your agency usually lets you know how long it takes for all the process to be done so uh currently when it comes to visas it's kind of mish mashy you know because of covid and all so you have to find out how long the processing time of the visa will be before you agree it on a certain time and then once you find out then you can tell the family or the agency like when you'll be able to travel to the host country kind of thing so yeah and then number five show interest in your potential host family show your interest and excitement when talking for the first time with your potential host family yeah like, i mean it is exciting you know it's like so be like i said before be yourself in front of the camera don't pretend to be something you're not don't be over like ah and then the next moment is like blah kind of thing and um let them know that you have read the profile carefully and you can show that by asking as many questions as possible when it comes to their profile you know yeah and would like to get to know them better ask questions about their lifestyles and hobbies and be sure to share yours as well there you go and then number 12 how long you can be an au pair so depending on an, on the age you start at let's say for example i started my au pair journey at the age of 22 and i became an au pair i had a one-year contract so that's the minimum you can get for usa i think one year and then after one year you can choose to either extend your contract for between three to 12 months so between three months and a year for me in case i extended for another year so i stayed in new jersey for two years then you have one month extra at the end of your term which they call travel month which you can do anything you like travel around the country and yeah i chose not to do that i chose to leave and go home then um so depend like the visa that you come with to usa is called a j1 visa and you can stay here for two years as an au pair after two years you are gonna have to wait another two years before you can apply again to be an au pair which is what i did that's how i was able to come back as an au pair and at the right age as long as you are uh what you call it at the age of 26 and not older than 26 let's say you're not 27 if you're not hit 27 yet you can still become an au pair so that's what i did I applied to become an au pair again and I was able to come back after it wasn't exactly two years because I left in 2017 July so I came back here in September of 2019 so it was a little over two years and then I applied again and I came I came back here so yeah you can apply you can apply a few times depending on your age and you can also apply in different countries you can literally travel and become an au pair in different countries depending on their age re, uh, age requirements and whatnot and whatever requirements they need in general experience and all and then last but not least number 13 how to handle stress homesickness and anything hard to handle in general i would say have someone to talk to there is there's always going to be someone you can talk to like this um a local coordinator which is called an LCC they are there to support you so if ever you need someone to talk to you can talk to them if you don't have any friends as yet you can talk to them or you can talk to your family back home like you can call them online like FaceTime otherwise there's always friends 
friends or your family you you know make kind of thing in the different place you can go to your friends and talk to them about your problem problems or whatever issues you're having so don't just give up a lot of a lot of au pairs will get all homes very homesick so homesick that they actually decide to go home which i find sad because it's like you're losing on your opportunity to like you know with the experience and all gaining more experience because once you when you leave before your program ends you cannot be become an au pair again because it's gonna be like oh you're not gonna finish your program again so yeah it's it's harder you're gonna have to come as a like with a different kind of reason like traveling a travel visa or something like that so yeah um so that's that for now i think let's see yeah i, I want to say i can also leave out uh i'm gonna leave out a short video of or screenshot of how i went about applying for au pair uh au pair world and yeah and then so thank you guys for joining me again and i hope that i was very informative and if i left out anything at all please let me know and i will reply in the comments so thank you again Mwah! love you so here's a quick co-pro on how to apply you go to menu become an au pair you scroll down and then you press create profile you will have to either play the video so you can find more information and then step by step it's very easy really to apply you, to create your profile um, you're gonna register as an au pair and then scroll down a bit more and you will enter your first name your last name your date of birth gender email address create a password contact details your address um, and then more about you your nationality and all that uh, your mother tongue your languages and then confirm and then create your profile <laughs>